Hi, I'm Chuck. And Deb. And welcome to Biker Life Radio. We're so truly grateful and thankful that you've joined us today. We've got a fantastic show lined up just for you. Biker Life Radio is for those who ride and those who inspire to ride. We are here to reveal the truth behind the motorcycle mystique and bring real life stories of the biker lifestyle. All right, fantastic. Deb, let's... Uh, Talk, uh, share about today, one of our sponsors. Today's show sponsor is Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. So if you are ready to put your seats in the saddle, foot on the foot pegs, chins in the wind, knees in the breeze, seats in the saddle, and get rolling, then hang on because here we go. You guys, we are in for you guys are in for a fantastic show today. We've got a fantastic individual that you're gonna love. To watch and hear from so be sure to stay tuned we're going to go right there in just a moment okay all right so hang on because we do need to talk about this one event we have had an event that's been on and off and on and off for a while but they are on and so we wanted to make sure and mention that the micro apocalyptic madness that's a mouthful <laughs> um actually will be hosted on june 26th in hudson florida at the wing in it so that's a little bit of an odd thing but tickets are event on eventbrite it is a motorcycle event it's a charity event it's all family oriented so please get out there um to, and find the micro apocalyptic madness event on june 26th of, at 6th if you're looking for something in the hudson florida area area to attend all right and so right now what we're going to do is we're going to get started with david so let's go ahead and bring david on here you go we are packing the bikes and ready for an exciting trip today as we connect with a wonderful guest on today's show. We met David last October after Chuck was reading an article in a magazine called Motoclectic, and he was intrigued by the bright idea described and reached out. So David is the president and the inventor of Third Eye Design and the InView, which is a wireless helmet mounted brake and signal light. As a motorcycle coach, safety is always top of mind for me. And although that is what brought us together, there is so much more that we are so excited to share with everyone Absolutely. today. So David, we want to welcome you to the show. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you so much. It's you know, truly a pleasure to be here and it's, it's great talking. So. Absolutely, it sure yeah. is. We've been looking forward to this for quite some time. <laughs> so we're really glad that uh, we're able to make it happen. And uh, we really appreciate staying in touch with you over this period of time, yeah, too. It's been a bet. great thing, forming yeah. a great uh, friendship. And it's interesting how things happen at a distance, how we can come together. And what we have in common is one thing. Biking, Whatever motorcycling. Ride, yeah. So that's yeah. really a cool thing. And it, that's what brings us together among other things as well. But that's a good start. So what do we got here? Where, where do you want to start, Deb? Well, let's get the ignition started. And by finding out, David, where are you joining us from today? Oh, I'm in uh, uh, a town called Pittsford in upstate New York. Okay. All right. Now, have you lived there all your life, David? I have in the, in the Rochester area. Yeah. Just uh, Pittsburgh's a little suburb just outside of Rochester, New York, but yep, yeah, sure have. Okay. okay wonderful. Yeah. And the last time we talked, you had mentioned something that intrigued and sparked huge interest in us. <laughs> and we've been talking about it ever since. So what do you ride and how do you ride? Oh, um, so I've been riding for a long time, uh, but I currently ride and have been riding uh, a BMW R1200 GS adventure. Okay. And uh, it was really, it was a bucket list motorcycle for me. Uh, in 2013, they made it water cooled. In 2014, they introduced the adventure model uh, in the water cooled option. And that's, that's when I pulled the trigger. So uh, just, it's just, it's an amazing bike. I mean, tons of miles on it, tons of miles in a day. It's comfortable. I do a lot of two up riding and uh, you know, we tend to go to the road less traveled. So we love to head out and find places to explore and uh, dirt roads. And uh, as I was saying earlier, you know, we did the Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico trip. Um, had the good fortune of doing some off-road in Moab. Beautiful. Um, two years ago, we did Vermont. A lot of dirt roads and covered bridges. And uh, it's just a blast. You know, you get to see a part of the country that, that, you know, a lot of people don't get to see either because of the vehicle or the difficulty in the terrain and uh, it's really something special. Now, ha had you ridden before? I have, I, I kind of grew up riding um, motocross. Okay. So I rode off road for a lot of years. And then uh, I was in college, I was selling my motorcycle uh, for some college money and uh, somebody stole it. Oh. And yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know what? I've never been hurt on it. 
and maybe it was a sign. So I gave up motorcycling for a bunch of years and then maybe a decade or so got back into it. Mm -hmm. um, started out with a BMW, smaller BMW GS. And then in 2014, bought the R1200 GS Adventure that I'm riding now. Okay. So the yep. direction was always go going toward the adventure bikes. Now that's so because you were doing the moto cross, you know, that's what yeah. you were went in that direction. Yeah, I did. And, uh, you know, I love exploring okay. and, uh, those, those style bikes make it pretty easy, you know, and right. I, I guess I have more choices and, uh, the, the R 1200 is such a great touring bike. Um, when my wife and I were, uh, when we did the big Western trip, we had a couple of 10, 11 hour days in the saddle okay. and, uh, you know, we're tired at the end of the day, but you know, we both look at each other and say, it, it's pretty amazing how good we feel considering the time that we've spent, you know, riding and so the bike has just been amazing. That's so great. yeah, I love it. I've got a friend, uh, Mikey, and, uh, he's actually also done some of that adventure riding and he's on a bike and actually he, he's recently come to a crossroads of where uh, he he's, couldn't decide if he wanted to go to the adventure bike. And I forgot the one. Oh, I just can't remember the one he wanted to get. Mm, the African, know. what's it called? The African, African twin. African yeah. twin. And Great he was new gonna, bike by Honda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so he was going to do that or possibly go back to another Harley. I think he's made up, my, my, made up his mind, uh, but we'll have to see what the end result is. But for him, he just wanted to be able to ride with somebody. And the only reason yeah. I bring that up is he's, he's been sending me videos on the adventure bikes. And he yeah. sent one video the other day of somebody doing the, the Continental Divide, I think it was. Yeah. It was like from Canada down to Mexico. Yeah. And yeah. We, I sent it to Deb, and it was just interesting to watch this, this whole trip. And I'm like, yeah, I could get into that. <laughs> you know, when you get a chance, jump out to the web and look up BDR. BDR. And it's BDR. Yep, backcountry discovery routes. So BDR is an organization that has mapped out uh, off-road trails and uh, adventure trails across the U.S. And they have a BDR in every region. So there's a Colorado, there's a Northeast, which is just recently done. There's there's a B, there's a BDR everywhere you want to ride. They're they're long. Um, you can jump on parts of them. They're uh, well explored trails. So you can you can talk to people who've done them. You can see the maps. Um, and they're great ways to discover parts of the country that you might not otherwise see. Oh, but BDR, yeah. yeah, tons of fun. That is so cool. That yeah, is so neat. yeah. It does. Ever since we talked to you last time, and Deb's actually oh. been just as fired up <laughs> as I am about it. And she keeps yeah. talking to me, we got to go test ride. We got to go test ride one. I'm just, we'll we'll yeah. test ride. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> and she saw it the is. video too, and she was like, you know, and, you know, they're up there on some mountains, and you can, you know, they're riding yeah. pretty good with the little cliff right there. So, yeah. but it's, you know, uh, it's, it's easier. It's, it's really a lot easier than you think. Okay. And, uh, and I do most of it two up with my wife because right. it's such an amazing experience to share. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, just a quick, funny story. We did uh, one of the first things we did in Colorado was um, shelf road. So, and there's a lot of places that have a shelf road, but shelf road is a very narrow track. Uh, it's, uh, it's on a knife edge in between two towns. So um, it's a thousand, 1500 feet up, something like that. And uh, they don't allow cars on it. It's too narrow. Maybe it's uh, about three feet wide, paved most of the way, um, but they allow motorcycles on it. And uh, my wife was the picture taker for this trip. Okay. Yes, sir. So the, so the first thing we do is we get there. We're in Colorado Springs. We take off pretty easy, standard road kind of stuff. Then we hit Shelf Road. And uh, we're talking on our Senna's. And uh, Sandra, this is going to be great, a great photo op opportunity. And she was clutched onto me, you know, I mean, she barely peek up because it's crazy. You know, you got this little three foot wide thing and then just, you know, a big drop. Drops. Um, and, uh, so that's how it started. And uh, we finished with it and, you know, she, she said it was beautiful. I hope I got some pictures, but I really can't tell. I pushed the trigger button, but you know, and by the end of the trip, she's hanging off the oh. bike like this <laughs> and she, you know, so, so it, she just got really accustomed really to right. it. You know, the bike is really stable and yeah, yeah. yeah that's but, too yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, tons of fun. So now as a rider coach, I know I talk about dual sports. Is there a difference between dual sport and the adventure biking? That there you're is. Doing? Okay. Tell us a little bit. There more. is. So a dual sport bike would be a bike that's more geared for off-road, okay. um, like uh, maybe a KLR. Uh, KLR has been around for a long time. Um, uh, Africa Twin is probably 
an adventure style, although the Africa Twin, the KTM, depending upon the model, is more off-road based. Okay. The BMW GS Adventure. So these are bikes that have big panniers, more storage, uh, better, probably better equipped for longer distance, mm -hmm. but err on the side of road travel as opposed to off-road. Okay. Um, but they're, they're, they're all Swiss army knives of motorcycles because they're, <laughs> you know, they're all highly capable. Okay. Right. Um, adventure bikes tend to have more uh, fairing, wind protection, that kind of stuff. Okay. Whereas dual store dual sport bikes, um, not so concerned about that. They're probably more concerned with lighter weight, um, maybe more suspension travel, knobby tires. Um, yeah. Good Most stuff. of my yeah. stuff is road. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. So that's a, yeah. always been an intrigue. And again, as soon as we talked about it, I'm like, okay, I got to figure out this adventure biking thing because it sounds pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it really, it's, it's, if you like to explore, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, and no doubt. I th I think we would enjoy it because the I exploring so. part would be really good, and we've got the road and and because you could do the road and the off road, right. and that Absolutely. just makes it so much more interesting and yeah. a little bit more fun and yeah, obviously the name has it adventurous. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and you know with a a lot of the stuff that we do, you know, we'll go out and we'll uh, we'll we'll take the road to get someplace, and then we'll find a, a seasonal use road you know, okay. seasonal use, um, or, uh, or a road that's just, just you know, maybe it's, it's dirt, it's grooved, it's not in great shape. And, you know, where does this go? And, and it's amazing because you'll head down a road like that, and then you'll see a 6,000 square foot log cabin that's just unbelievable, you know, sitting on a terrace on the top of a mountain, and it's just so you see you see some really cool yeah, stuff you know stuff. and it's yeah yeah oh really rustic and that kind of thing i just yeah ah, so are there actually. any specific adventure riding classes or you know how would one get absolutely. started how did you get started absolutely well i had uh, off-road experience okay. uh, growing up doing motocross um but there are there's a bunch of companies that specifically teach uh adventure riding bmw so if you get a BMW, BMW offers several classes and places to go to learn how to adventure ride. Um, there's, uh, I think there's a school out in California, the name is now escaping me. Um, if I think of it, I'll mention it. Um, but if you were to do a search for, for adventure riding, you'd, you'd find a bunch. Okay. And a, a lot of them are great. And they're gonna start with really simple stuff, but anything you learn from an adventure riding perspective, it's gonna help you on the street. Okay. You know, it teaches you balance. It teaches you slow skills. Slow skills are something that's important to learn and practice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, certainly ad adventure riding, dual sport. Yeah, lots good. of schools. Yeah. That's interesting because I would we have never thought that there was a school. So yeah, yeah I'm glad absolutely. you asked the question, Deb. Because we'll of course, be going to yeah. school on our trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the um, some of the uh, some of the adventure places actually do BDR. Backcountry okay. Discovery okay. Route. Uh -huh. So, you know, you go to the school, they happen to be located fairly close to one of these places, they rent you a bike, which is nice. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, they'll give you a day or two of training. And uh, once once they see you've kind of mastered some of these slow skills, some of the terrain that you might be doing, then you he head off on the, on the Backcountry Discovery Route. And uh, that's really cool. A lot of it involves camping. You know, you'll pitch a tent and spend a night. Um, sometimes there's hotels and towns along the way, and you'll just stop there if that's your preference. But, um, yeah, really cool places to explore. That just sounds so much yeah. fun. Yeah. We're, we're definitely going to be checking it out in the future. <laughs> yeah. There's absolutely yeah. no doubt about it. But while we're there and while we're talking about this, is there a particular, you know, and it might be a little bit of a, a – question you know and of all the rides that you do is there one particular ride that stands out above all the rest that you'd like to share with us um they're so different you know um so third eye design exhibits at americade every year okay. and americade is up in lake george up in the adirondack region in new york state and uh uh, one of my uh, employees and I fight over who's going to drive the truck and pull the trailer and who's going to ride the bike. <laughs> and um, the, the interesting thing is um, he usually wins driving the truck when it's raining. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happens, but, um, but the riding up there is gorgeous. So up in the, up in the Lake George area, heavily wooded, um, lots of curvy roads, really interesting scenery. Um, and, and it's mountainous, so that's a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. So Lake George is something that we do at least annually, and, uh, and that's a great ride. Vermont is a fun place to ride. 
Okay. It's, it's rural. It can be rustic. There's some great cities, um, mm. uh, but then covered bridges and history. You know, I always like that. Sure, and then, of course, really out west. And, you know, when we did the Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, every state is different. And uh, uh, Sandra and I were in, we were in Bryce Canyon. And uh, we had had a 10-hour day on the bike to get to Bryce Canyon from, uh, I think we were in, uh, yeah, we went to Bryce from uh, the Grand Canyon. In any case, we woke up early in the morning, and the next stop was uh, Moab. Uh, and I've been to Moab before. It's gorgeous. Riding is gorgeous. The, the, the scenery and, uh, and the rocks and the arches are just, just really otherworldly, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And so we had two choices. Uh, we could get there uh, on the road, and it was a fairly uh, short trip, or you could get there on the back roads, and that was a long trip. And Sandra and I looked at each other and said, well, that was a long day that we just mm -hmm. had on the bike. Let's take, let's take the short route. And that's okay, because even yeah. the short route is, is still going to be beautiful. You're going to see mountains. You're just going to be on pavement. So we headed uh, in, in the uh, kind of in the opposite direction to jump on a throughway that was going to loop us around. And we got about 30 miles uh, away and everybody, well, a lot of other folks were taking the short route and they went north. We went south and we ended up in a town uh, about 30 miles away to have breakfast. It's about 730 in the morning. And a guy pulls in to get breakfast on this monster um, ATV four wheel thing. It was just really cool. Jack up and, and he walks in and, and you could tell he was a local. He went, Hey Mavis, uh, is my breakfast ready? She goes, yep, it's right here. And I just stopped him cause I was sitting near that kind of encounter. And I said, that that's a really cool device, but, but I noticed you don't have a license plate on it. And he said, Oh, you're in Penguich. We don't, you don't have to have a license plate here to ride on the road. We're the epicenter of 2,000 square miles of off-road riding. So as long as you're riding to a destination, you can't just zip through town, but if you're riding to a destination in town, we have so many off-road vehicles here, you don't need a license. And I said, wow. He said, where are you from? We said, New York, where are you going? We said, Moab. He said, are you taking routes uh, 12 and 24? And, uh, and I said, no. I said, we were going to, but um, you know, we had a big day yesterday and that was a long ride and he goes, you, you got to take those routes. And I said, why? He said, I've driven on every road in this country. And he said, we are so fortunate to have two of the most beautiful roads right here. And he said, you, you, you got to ride them. He said, come down to my shop. So he owned this off-road uh, rental place. So we finish up breakfast. We go down to a shop. He shows us the route. Sandra and I looked at each other and we said, that this is why we're here. We turned around, went back to where we started and then took the long way back and it was that's that's probably the best ride i've ever had you're you're you know our jaws were tired because they were just so open the entire you, <laughs> you take a turn and you're just oh my god yeah. it, it, it's kind of like you know when um my when when we had our boys when we, when we had our kids you know i would uh, i'd look i remember looking at my wife and i'm saying you know they're an infant how does it get any better than this you know <laughs> and then then they start crawling and then they, they start toddling and they hug you and then they start talking. And I, 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 to this day, you know, my, my, my older guy is uh, uh, number one in his class in dental school. My younger guy just graduated with a degree in environmental engineering, did very well. And I, I, I still think, you know, how does it get any better? Well, that's what this road trip was like. Mm. You take a turn and you're just, and the scenery is so dramatic and it changes so fast. Um, if, uh, if somebody hasn't ridden out west, I encourage you to do it. Yes. Oh, yeah. great Beautiful. story. Oh, yeah. And it was like, I mean, it was like, it was meant to be, yeah. you yeah. know, that you ran into this guy and all this happened oh. and, and had yeah. it not been, you know, oh my yeah. goodness. It was all destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Were you going to really say something glad. different? Yeah. No, just, it was, uh, we, we, it was a really good fortune meeting him and uh, so happy we turned around and took the long route and uh, it was a, it was a big day, but you didn't feel like it was a big day until right. it ended. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, you, you felt it, exhausted. but at the whole yeah. time you're just immersed in it. And yeah. what an incredible story. I love yeah. that because, yeah. you know, it just happened. You were there and yeah. uh, it led you on to another adventure. And that's really, really just a great story. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank and you. I, you know, I think that's what keeps us riding, but there's also the other side of rides. Oh, yeah. And of course we couldn't talk about the good without 
somehow getting to a ride that just didn't go quite as you planned. So do you have any of those that kind of stick out that are, that are still stories you talk about sure today? That you can laugh at today <laughs> right. that you didn't laugh at at the time? I do. I have two. Um, one of them was on the way to Lake George. And uh, my wife and I are both amateur photographers. So we're always looking for a photo op. We, we, we don't go anywhere without our cameras, right? And uh, we were, uh, were driving these beautiful roads up in Lake George. It's, you know, 75 degrees. It's not, it's beautifully sunny. The roads are in great condition. And um, we're pretty relaxed at this point. So we've been riding for a couple hours on these roads. And I look to my left and I see this cobblestone house that had had a fire. It's all burned out, mm. but it was beautiful. You know what I mean? Mm. Kind of sitting up there uh, abandoned. And uh, the roads we were on up there are 55 mile an hour roads. Okay. But then, you know, you get the warning, caution, 35 mile an hour turn, warning, caution, 30 mile an hour turn. So you really got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And when they say 30 miles an hour, they mean it. Okay. So, so we, we've been pretty used to doing this. The pace was good. And um, one of my uh, very good friends and employee was riding ahead of us. So we were following him. And um, so I, I'm talking to Sandra on the headset and I, I just looked up and I'm just amazed at this cobblestone and I'm thinking, how do I let Robert, my employee know that we're going to stop for a second? Cause I really want to take a couple of pictures of it. And all of a sudden Sandra says, watch out. And I turn back and I realize I'm in the apex of a 30 mile an hour turn doing 60 miles an hour. Oh my God. And I was pretty sure the bike, I, it was, the bike wouldn't have handled the turn. So um, thankfully, it was an area where there was no guardrail and there was a big dip and trees, heavily wooded, heavily wooded, but this, this, this little narrow grove of trees opened up into a field. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just said, Sandra, hang on. And we shot off the road. We went down this dip, came into this field. I'm hitting the brakes as hard as I can. It's dirt, it's grass, it's wildflowers. And, uh, I feel the anti-lock brakes coming on and I'm heading towards um, a woods that I can't get through. It's too, too heavily wooded. I, I'm just not going to make it. And I stopped, I kid you not, 15 feet in front of the woods, didn't even put my feet down, turned around and drove back out. <laughs> and Robert, Robert, poor Robert is sitting, uh, you know, uh, 50 yards down the road. Um, he, he's off the road. He stopped his bike and he, I talked to him later and he said, I was getting ready to dial 911 because he said oh. he saw a shoot off the road <laughs> in, his, <laughs> in his rear view mirror. And he said, okay, that's it. Yeah, we're done. Wow. <laughs> so that was a crazy, not, not paying attention thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so as, right. as motorcyclists, it's, you know, it's really critical to really, you know, really stay focused, pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah. So that, uh, that hasn't happened since. Okay. Um, <laughs> but that was, that was a learning experience. The other one was a case where, uh, now, you know, I've got uh, a, a lot of lights on my bike. I ride within view and I have 139 decibel horn. Okay. I have, uh, I have uh, two 2700 watt uh, driving lights on the bike that strobe when the horn comes on. So I'm visible mm, and you can hear me, right? So uh, I was riding in an area on the road that I'd been to a bunch of times before, and there was a school. And the school had a driveway that went down a relatively steep hill down to the school that was sitting off to the side. And uh, I'm approaching it, and I see a guy in a station wagon ready to pull out in front of me. And, uh, but I was probably doing 40 at the time. And he started to pull out, and I horned him. So the lights flash and uh, the, you know, the horn, of course, is super, super loud. And he stops. And I figured, well, we're fine. He mm -hmm. saw me. Mm -hmm. And he waited. And when we were right, just about to pass him, he pulls out. He pulled out right in front of us. And I know he saw us. Don't know why he did it. I, I mean, I'd have clobbered him. Thankfully, pure luck, there were houses to the right. Okay. So the, some poor guy was out, uh, he was out raking his lawn and he had this big pile of brush and leaves in the front of his lawn. And I just shot through it <laughs> and he's, he's looking at me like, <laughs> you know, so here's this, here's this big motorcycle with two people on it that shoots through this little brush pile he's got. We, uh, we, we, we shot across his lawn, turned around, came back out his driveway 
And, uh, but that was a failure to be seen mm. or failure mm. to be recognized or something situation. And mm. uh, that was a bad one. I don't know, I don't know, that. You, um, I don't know how you fix that one. I mean, yeah. it sounds like you did everything you possibly could. I don't know. You're prepared to yeah. react the way he did. Yeah, you know, right. That's that was a great you, reaction, you, no you doubt. You simply yeah. prepare for that reaction. Oh, I've got one more, if I may. Okay. We were testing InView. So, of course, you know, InView has been, I mean, you know, it's, it's been out. Com we founded the company in, 2000, um, in 2009. Spent a ton of time doing focus group study work, whatever. Uh, did pilots, user group studies. Um, and we were out testing. Now, it was a really hot summer day. And uh, I'm, I'm an at-gat guy, right? So I don't ride without being fully geared. And, and uh, so at this point, you know, I'm, I'm putting the jacket on and the helmet and the gloves and going for a ride and coming home, taking it off, doing a little bit of work, fine tuning, putting it all back on. And um, it's just becoming a pain in the neck. So I had one more test I needed to perform. I have a short sleeve shirt on like this. And I decided, you know what? I don't have to go very far. I'm just going to. I'm not going to bother with my jacket. Of course, I got boots and gloves and a helmet. And so I take off. And I was testing. I can't remember what I was doing. I didn't have InView on my helmet. Mm. So when I went out, I left InView behind. Mm. So I go out of my development. I go up to the corner. And I'm at a fairly busy four-way intersection. And it's probably... Uh, I think it's uh, it's it's two lanes in one direction, four lanes in the other direction on the main road. I'm on the main road, um, and I'm coming up behind a, a lawn and landscape guy with a trailer and, and a tractor on it, that kind of stuff. And he, his lights were out, so he's taking a right on the on the smaller road, and our light is green. And as he turns right, somebody stepped out to cross in front of him. Oh. They stepped out of a woods. There's no crosswalk. There's no, they just stepped out. So this guy panic stops. I'm right behind him on my motorcycle. I panic stop, mm -hmm. heart speeding. And I stopped literally with my front tire practically touching his trailer. I have no place to go. And all I hear in the background is a screech of tires. Oh. And I look in my rear view mirror and I see a Nissan out of control skidding like this and thankfully the driver had the presence of mind to go on the other side of the truck and he was a little bit in front of me by the time he stopped oh. so now this guy wasn't that close to us he, he wasn't he didn't have to do a panic stop mm -hmm. but he didn't realize we were stopped or stopping yeah and uh and that was that's a really dangerous situation I speak all over the place on, on InView, and I, I'll tell you, at almost every place I go to speak, someone comes up to me afterwards and said I was rear-ended at a light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. One, one guy from Motorcycle Consumer News was rear-ended twice, two different motorcycles. Jeez. And uh, that's a scary situation. It is. So never again without all the gear, never again without InView. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Hard lessons and, learned. And what a story. Yeah. I mean, the stories are amazing. I thought, oh, maybe we'll hear about a flat tire out of the middle of nowhere running out of gas. <laughs> no. Those were phenomenal, yeah. David. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're enough, you know. Yeah, they're enough. <laughs> yeah. And the one going over the cliff and about going into the oh. woods. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Unbelievable. But you know, if you, if you ride enough, you're going to have those stories. Yes, and, and, and hopefully, the, you know, you, you prepare as much in advance for them as you can. You right. prepare by wearing the right gear, you know, doing the right thing, being as visible as possible. Um, and then when the event occurs, uh, you deal with it the best possible way you can. And hopefully you come out okay. Absolutely. Um, but, well, and training. Fantastic stories. Yeah, great and, stories. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's probably a good segue into let's get starting to talk a little bit about about the end view sure. and uh, about third eye. And, but before we do, is there anything else that you'd like, you know, maybe our audience to know about you personally? Um, I, I don't know. Touch on. I mean, I, no, I two, learned today that you have uh, two boys. So that was two new boys. for us. So you, yep. you got a family, you got a wife, uh, Sandra. Yep. She loves riding yep. with yep. you. So that's pretty cool. Really exciting. Yeah. We ride together, uh, scuba dive. I'm a big scuba oh, diver. So I think one of my other passions is scuba diving. My wife scuba yeah. dives, so we try to do that whenever we can. All around um, adventure person. <laughs> yeah. <Earth> seeker. <laughs> yeah. The I stuff that so. you don't want to put on your life insurance application. Yeah, 
<laughs> so true, boy. We might have to cut that out of here, David, in case, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't have them listen if they ride. Yeah. <laughs> so it's time to hit the trail, and we want to focus yeah. on how you've made your passion into becoming a better and safer place one motorcycle at a time. So sure. if you will, please share with us yeah, you um, bet. how, you know, Third Eye has come about. Yeah, and, and actually, little... before, we, I know you're re ready to jump into it, but I got a curious question myself. Sure. You've got Third Eye Design, and yeah. I know this is sort of weird, but I like knowing little things like this. Yeah. How did you come up with the name Third Eye Design? Just out of curiosity. Uh, we didn't know what to call the company, right? Okay. We didn't know what. So there's there's the third eye, and in in, in some cultures it's mystical. It's all seeing, okay. right? Yes. Um. So it's a symbol of uh. It's a symbol of of safety and being visible. Uh. And uh. I, I just thought it kind of worked with what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, socialized it with some people. They thought it was kind of cool, and it stuck. I love it. There you yeah. go. So I had to ask about it. <laughs> names are tough, though. I mean, yeah, names they are. Can be. They are. Names are really, really tough. Yeah. But yeah, so third eye, that's it. Back there of the napkin go. kind great. of a thing. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you shared that with me. I appreciate yeah. it because we're like that. I mean, sometimes we spend so much time on the littlest things that blow yeah. your mind. That but people would go, yeah. it's so, no big deal. And we go, yeah. oh, but it is we a spend, big deal. But it is a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're right. You know, you're and right. it's worth, you know, trying to figure it out. And I love the name. So thanks for sharing that. So now that we know, how it came about you need sure. to make sure and share with us what third eye design is all about and this fantastic sure. product called the InView because you've touched on that just briefly yeah thank you um this is a decade ago more than a decade ago uh i was on my way home from work it was a uh, friday end of a long week uh in the middle of the summertime i was approaching a light i'd stopped at a thousand times before very familiar with the area i'm getting ready to stop behind a van so i see this this van in front of me and it wasn't until the very last minute i realized there was a motorcycle between me and the van and the only reason i saw the motorcycle because the color of his jacket and his helmet blended directly into the color of the van mm -hmm. is because at the last minute he moved his head which had been blocking the third brake light on the van as soon as he did that, panic stop, nobody gets hurt. Why doesn't he have a brake light on the back of his motorcycle helmet? Mm -hmm. the, real re the real answer is because the technology didn't exist. Right. So we, uh, I, I was a uh, program project manager by background and uh, did what a program project manager would do. It started to do a bunch of research, started focus group work. Uh, had the really good fortune of meeting a guy by the name of Bill Dutcher. Bill Dutcher is the founder of AmeriCade, a uh, very old, uh, one of the largest and oldest rallies in New York State. Okay. And he said, come up, I'd love to talk to you. We're all about family and safety. And so I did. He loved the idea. And he said, how can I help? And I think one of the first things I said, well, you know, would you sit on my, on my board of directors? And he said, I can't. He said, I have a whole bunch of vendors that come up to AmeriCade every year. They want me to sit on their board. And I can't tell everybody yes. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. And uh, he said, but I'll, I'll, tell me what else I can do. I said, well, we need to talk to people. So he had a huge audience. So he really facilitated our ability to talk to people. So we spent a couple thousand hours over a multi-year period uh, asking people, what do they want? Mm -hmm. And if you're in the project management world, uh, customers would often tell you, I want uh, good, fast, and cheap. And a project <laughs> manager would say, pick two. You can't have all three. Right. Well, our customers really told us that they wanted good, fast, and cheap. They wanted an ultra bright light that didn't have a switch because they won't remember to turn it on or turn it off. They want it to, to have an automatic pairing capability because they have multiple motorcycles. They want to be able to switch motorcycles without having to buy multiple, unit, multiple units or pair it every time. Um, they wanted long battery life. Mm -hmm. And that list started to, be, to sound impossible. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know how impossible it was going to be at the time. And uh, I had the good fortune of meeting a brilliant engineer uh, who specialized in low frequency uh, RF communication. And uh, we started building. And uh, five years later of you know, R&D and patent work, um, we, we came up with InView. And uh, it, it really, you know, two AAA batteries last a month or two. You never have to remember to turn it on or off. There's automatic diagnostics, so you're going to feel it vibrate and chirp when you first use it. That says it's working. 
Uh, if the two of you are riding together, it goes on the back helmet, easily moves from helmet to helmet. And um, so we had all these requirements that people told us they wanted. And after five years, we did it. That's fantastic. So very exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and uh, it's, it's interesting how when, you, when, you, when you're out there and you put yourself out, people and things come, come into play. And it seems like that's, that's happened, you know, with you. It's like, it's like um, you know, sometimes they say when, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So, yeah. and uh, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, you know, you took a step out there and you met this gentleman and then just one thing sort of led to another and here you are. And it's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, you know, I, I really, I try to give back because I've had so many people who have stepped out to help mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it's, it's really, it, you know, I feel blessed, you know, and uh, it's been, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, Bill Dutcher and all the folks at Americade have been amazing, but I've, I've got, uh, the professionals that work with me at third eye design. My attorney is, uh, is an amazing guy. He's been with me for more than a decade and he's never charged me a dime. He's never charged me a dime. Are you sure he's an attorney? Yeah, <laughs> he is an attorney. Um, I've got two of them. I've got an attorney and a patent agent who, uh, who just believe in what I'm doing. Um, I've, uh, uh, I've given them a small piece of the company as, as a way of saying, thank you. I, I, they didn't ask for it or require it. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it's that kind of stuff, you know, people who really believe in it. Um, and it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's really amazing. So my, uh, my objective is to really turn the company into something to reward folks like that. Um, you know, to make them feel like, uh, they, you know, they're part of something really special. David, so, yeah. I am absolutely loving your story. I'm sitting here. I got chills going down my arms here. I got actually <laughs> chills going down on my legs. I'm wearing shorts <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I'm sitting here and it's, it's just, it, uh, it, there's just something about it for me of, of how you've taken it, how it's happened for you mm -hmm. and have you taken it and you're giving it back and, and, and you know, you're blessed. I mean, I, I, it's like, I can't even describe. It's just so, it's just, it's just really neat. It's amazing. Thank you. Those are oftentimes the stories we just don't hear enough of and in this world. I think we need to hear more of that, actually. And You, uh, you want to hear another cool one? Absolutely. Because coming from you, it's got to okay. be. This is a cool one. So uh, we have a contract manufacturer that, uh, that builds our product located here in Rochester, just outside of Rochester. And they're wonderful. Love them. Sermotech. And uh, so they've been, uh, they've been a big part of the company and what we do. They're just, a, they're, you know, they're a contract shop, um, but they, they do excellent work and uh, it's really appreciated what they've done. Mm -hmm. um, we were getting to the point where we felt, uh, you know, we want to be prepared just in case we need to meet volumes. So they're, um, they're a mid-sized contract manufacturer. And we said, well, people, and, and I'm, I'm completely dedicated to them. But people have been approaching us. We can do your contract manufacturing. We can do your contract manufacturing. And I would say, thank you. We're all set. And then finally, we decided, well, maybe we should talk to somebody in terms of a backup. Fine. Mm -hmm. So I got an introduction to a woman who was uh, in Buffalo, about uh, an hour away. And uh, the person who introduced us said, you should take a trip up and talk to her. She's a wonderful lady. And uh, so we did. And she is a wonderful lady. And uh, it's a company called Soap Park. In Buffalo and she gave us a tour of her contract manufacturing company very nice very clean very nice operation and when the tour was over we sat in her conference room I had my team with me um, she had her executive team with her and I expected to get a pitch you know here's why we're great and here's what we can do for you and she knew I was dedicated to Sermotech but we were talking about backup capability and maybe if someday, whatever. Sure. And uh, she didn't do a pitch at all. Okay. She was Malaysian. She grew up in Malaysia. Um, she's been in the States a long time. She's been part of the Soap Park company for decades. And uh, she just simply said, you need to be in, in Southeast Asia. And my answer was, I know. But right now, we're really focused on the U.S. market. It's what my investors are really concerned about. It's a market we understand. And that's challenging enough, getting the word out. We know we'll be in Southeast Asia. We know we're a global company. But, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be too deluded. Right. She goes, well, 
uh, I travel there frequently and I'm going there in a few weeks. Would you mind if I brought some information? I said, sure. So I provide her with, with some information. She's a very well-connected lady, sits on a couple of global manufacturing boards, heads over to Malaysia. While she's there, she meets with MIROS. MIROS is the Malaysian Institute for Road Safety. It's a governing body that reports to the Malaysian Department of Transportation that helps set um, you know, uh, road rules, guidelines, dictates, that kind of stuff. And uh, MIROS loved it. In Malaysia has 27 million registered motorcyclists. Mm. Indonesia right next door has 133 million registered motorcyclists. I mean, they, they take, you know, we're very concerned about motorcycle safety in the US. It's at a whole nother level in Southeast Asia. And that's because of the trickle effect of the economics of injury. There are so many people who ride. If, 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 if someone gets hurt riding, it certainly impacts them. It, it can impact their family, certainly. It can impact the village they're from. It can impact the company that they work for. So road safety is really important. Helmet laws are universal throughout Southeast Asia, and they're trying to do things to change traffic patterns and dedicated roadways. So they heard about InView, and they loved it. So Miro said, would you mind coming back in the fall? We have a once a year road safety symposium. We have three guest speakers in a uh, innovative product safety segment. And uh, we, we'd love it if you could attend. Honda Motor Corporation and Continental Tire have curr currently accepted our invitation and we, we have a space for three. So we said yes. <laughs> so we headed back in the, in the fall of last year. Um, the presentation was so well received we had a private audience with the, with the Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, a private audience with the Minister of Transportation, and a private audience with the Chief of Police, which is a centralized organization. And they were just thrilled. And they endorsed our product launch. Oh, okay. We would have launched probably in the June time frame, but the whole COVID thing hit. Yes. So it, you know, it really shut the country down in terms of travel and, and, and gatherings. So right now, we're still on queue for Q4. Okay. to uh, to launch in Malaysia yeah. and a member of the royal family a prince is a is a Harley Davidson rider okay. and if you ride a Harley in Malaysia Harley has a big presence so Harley mm -hmm. uh, Honda big presence Ducati these are all the big franchise dealers over there and that those are considered big bikes and that's the market we're after and uh, he is so excited about inview he offered if he's the first person, uh, to get an interview, he's going to lead a procession of 50 motorcycles to a hard rock cafe uh, in the southern part of Malaysia, right above Singapore, where we're doing our product launch. And then there's a big party and, uh, you know, industry influencers and white clubs will be invited. Wonderful. And that's all planned for fourth quarter. You guys are going to be invited. Woohoo! All right, be we'll be there. That's fantastic. <laughs> but, but that was one of those, you know, that was one of those you know, kind of right place, right time, yeah. uh, you know, that, that is just it, and see, amazing, it, you know, it is. So and really that's exciting what's, for us. That's what's coming to me. And that's why these chills continue to stay here because I figured it out. <laughs> I figured it out, David. It's because this yeah. was meant to be. And because of the lives that are going to be saved by your invention, it's meant to be. And that's why all, everything collaborated, came together to form this, to make it happen because it was meant to be. That's the way I see it. It was the third eye at play. <laughs> the third eye, David. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we, you know, we tell people the company was founded on the belief that we can use technology to make the world a better, safer place. And mm -hmm. we're starting one motorcycle at a time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the folks that I've got here who work with me are amazing. We're all dedicated to it. And, uh, you know, if you love your job, you never work a day in your life. It's so and, true. Uh, Absolutely I mean, right. it's hard work, but, but it's, uh, it's very rewarding. And I think we can make a difference. I, I think you, know? you are going to make it. I think you are making a difference, difference already definitely. for sure. And so, you know, you, you know, there's <laughs> along with all this good stuff, there's got to be some other things. Right. So there's had to have been with any business, we know business startup because as we're entrepreneurs ourselves, you know, there's adversity that you face. So what mountain, we're curious about what mountains you've had to climb and overcome in the journey, because you said it, it, this isn't an overnight success. You've been working diligently for quite some time. So what type of adversity or what can you share with us has been some adversity and then how'd you overcome it? Sure. 
Sure. Um, I mean, and absolutely, there's there's been uh, plenty of it. And uh, I think you have to have a um, you, you have to have an attitude that uh, you, you're, you're going to achieve something, you're going to make it happen. And, um, uh, and I did, I was completely dedicated to this concept. Mm -hmm. And then you start to get people who back you from, from financially. Right. So, so, you know, an obligation gets set. I have mm -hmm. a, a, a huge responsibility to my investors. Um, one of the big hurdles that I've had is funding. Mm -hmm. It's expensive to do this. Uh, you know, the engineering and, and, and even though we've, uh, we've been pretty successful getting people to invest. Uh, time and money, um, it's still expensive. So one of my biggest challenges uh, remains fundraising there you go. Um, to support manufacturing, to support R&D, to support the office space, to support operations, to support. Um, so that's that's been a challenge, uh, getting revenue to the point where it supports all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, as, as you know, uh, uh, promoting a product is difficult. And social media, which is uh, a big focus for us is a pay for play game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of gone are the days where you can just kind of hope that somebody sees your post and mm -hmm. broadcast it. And the next thing you know, you know, the stales start coming in and that certainly happens. Sure. You know, we did the trade show show circuit in 2019 it was very successful for us. It was a way for us to get the word out there. That's really when we started selling in 2020, there haven't been any trade shows. Oh, so right. we're focused on social media. We're growing our following. It's, it's slow. Mm -hmm. um, Americade is, uh, is the first event uh, at the end of July that we'll be exhibiting at. So we're really looking forward to getting back up there and That's doing right. that. Um, so, so fundraising has been a struggle. Okay. Um, and then I think, you know, making people aware of it. Uh, it's, it's, I knew that was going to be difficult, but it's, it's harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, we can go to the same trade show two years in a row and uh, people will say, wow. I, and, and it's the same person who's attended both years. Um, will say what, well, this is amazing. I, you know, I've never seen anything like this before. This is great. And I can't believe I ran into you. And, uh, but they were there last year and, you know, they just, they didn't walk by us. They didn't notice they didn't whatever. And, you know, we don't have a big advertising budget, so you're not going to see in view on billboards and stuff. Mm -hmm. We, are, you know, we really count on word of mouth and mm -hmm. um, people using it. Yeah. So we're yeah, really excited to have you start riding with it. Oh yeah, yeah. no doubt we're excited so to have it. We, it's a, we right. ride with helmets, so it's a yeah. natural for us. So it just makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. and safety is always. And, part and of you know, talk. part of the reason you know we ask that question is because a lot of times people you know, maybe they don't think about these things, you know, when they see a company or somebody like yourself that's got an invention and they don't think about the heart and soul that goes into it. And then the, 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 the hurdles that you have to cross the, the adversity in many times that we have to go through and, the, but that's why it's all well worth it. It's worth to go through the adversity to actually do what you're doing to, to go out there. I mean, to me, David, your, your product is just, it's, it's huge, and, and I could see how you would take great pride in it because we are talking about life here, and that's the way I see it. I, I see your product as saving yeah. lives, and uh, that's all I got to, you know, it's, it's, you know, we got to go through, you know, sometimes businesses, I think people need to know that businesses don't just happen, right. okay? There are people behind businesses, and people s sacrifice their money, their time, all their effort, and there's a many sacrifices that go in to making things happen. So that's why I like to you know, ask that question because I think it's important for people to understand. So let's leave that behind because I never yeah. like to dwell on any negative. Okay. Let's talk about some new growth opportunities that's been going on with you that you just shared with us recently. You've got some really some killer things going on. You want to share some of that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we were really excited. I mean, again, you know, part of the challenge is making people aware of what we're doing. Um, we were at the uh, AIM Expo last year. Uh, it, was a, it was a great show for us in Columbus, Ohio. And while we were there, the CEO of Twisted Throttle walked by our booth. Uh, he is uh, he just what a great guy. You know, I don't know if you've ever been to the Twisted Throttle website. Um, it's a great website. Um, and you kind of get a feel to what the company is like based on the communication of the website. And uh, it's, it's really dead on They're They're just, it was such a pleasure meeting him. 
Um, in any case, he loved InView, and he said, I'd love to help you out. Now, uh, InView is made in the U.S. That was a very conscious decision to support U.S. manufacturing and U.S. jobs. Mm -hmm. um, the prototype that we had built was made overseas, and, um, and it was a fine product, and it's what we did when we did our, uh, our original pilot. Sure. Um, but when we made it in the U.S., the cost went up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so as a result, our margins are, are relatively small. It's been difficult to attract distribution as a result of that because the distributor wants a margin. He wants to provide the retailer with a margin. You don't want the price point, the retail price point to be too high. And when you take all that out, um, it makes it tough. So we had a couple distributors who were really interested. And uh, I met with their executive team and they said, come back to us when your margins improve. So we're constantly working on, um, you know, lowering our manufacturing costs, whatever, but it's tough and it's pennies at a time. So, uh, so Eric Stevens uh, comes by the booth and says, I love what you guys are doing and I'd like to help and let's talk. So I did. And he said, uh, we normally, we normally like greater margins. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give my dealers margin that, that they need to have for this unit and I'll sacrifice my margin. Um, but do me a favor. It's a handshake deal. When, when, when you can lower your manufacturing costs, you'll, you'll help me out too. Right on. And what a great offer. And uh, I said, yeah, that'd be great. So he took on North American distribution for us. We're currently awesome. licensed to sell in the U S and Canada. And uh, he started selling. He started signing up dealers, and uh, he signed up Revzilla, which you're probably familiar with. Yeah, so yeah. they're one of the giant, you know, uh, direct to consumer dealers. So uh, that was really good news for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, so Twisted Throttle's been selling for us. We're growing our dealer network, growing our install network. That's important. Mm -hmm. yep. Gives people confidence to, um, uh, to to know that they have a dealer they can go to. Right. And, uh, and then we, you know, we've got affiliates who are selling for us. Right. And uh, so, so yes, yeah, so we're, anyway, we're, we're growing that network and that's exciting because these are people who talk about what InView is, you know, hopefully they'll use it. They'll, people will see it on the street. And uh, I'm, I'm really anxious to hear about the comments you'll get as soon as you start riding with it. Yeah. Yeah, I had a guy just... file me for about five miles once and <laughs> I pulled into a hotel at one point in Colorado and he pulled in behind me and he jumps off his bike and he goes, you know, where'd you get that? And, and it was just such a cool experience, you know? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're prepared. We've got the cards you sent us. So yes. thanks for doing oh, awesome. that. Yeah. We yeah. are prepared Good. for that. Stickers. We're going yeah. like, we to plaster the Western yeah. part of the U S. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are ready to go from that. So, so in case I uh, just want to just, Reemphasize here that you're still looking for uh, investors, distributors, dealers, and installers. Yes. So any anybody in the audience, you know, right. get get in touch with Dave, and we'll make Absolutely. sure you get his information right after we're done here. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So you know, if there is someone that's you know listening or watching and has a vision, has a dream, like you did about the InView, what would you say to them to encourage them to just make it happen, go for it? And, and, you know, first off, make sure it's real, you know, make, make sure it's real. Cause I have had people who've come to me and said, I've, I've got this, this great idea. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I often understand why they feel it's a great idea, but it's, 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 it's not in its implementation. Mm -hmm. So, um, talk to a lot of people, talk to as many people as you can. And, and once you're really convinced that you've got a really unique, great idea, then don't give up. Um, I spent uh, I spent a lot of I mean I've only been doing this full time for two years. Uh, prior to that, it was still a full time job, but I had another full time job that paid me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know these are you know these are and I kid you not for years and years 70, 80 hour weeks, mm -hmm. yep. and it's brutal and uh, and it's slow because you end up working your 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 dream job at night when everybody else is not working. So you send out emails and you do stuff and then you get a response, but you're, you're at your paying job and you don't, you don't mix the two. So you get home at night and you read their email and you're like, Oh, wish I had seen that earlier. And right. you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's difficult. Um, and I still work a ton of hours, but now it's, yeah. you know, now it's doing one thing. Right. Um, but, but, you know, I tell people all the time too. I mean, if, um, if I make millions of dollars doing this, and I divide it by the number of hours I've got invested in it. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I'm hoping it'll be minimum wage. <laughs> You know, but yeah. so, so, you know, do it all for the right reasons too, exactly. you know, I mean, right. I really, I do believe in giving back and, uh, and that's a cool part about being the CEO of a company, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I was mentioning earlier, you know, we hired Arcworks, this, this amazing contract manufacturer that does all our packaging and fulfillment. Uh, it's big, 82,000 square feet, uh, one of the largest of its type in the U.S., supported 70% by a disabled workforce. That's and that's phenomenal. I love touring the facility. I mean, it's just amazing to go there. They have one of the lowest employee absent absenteeism rates in the country that's for a contract so manufacturer because these are folks who feel rewarded, um, valued, uh, and they love going to work. Isn't that something? And uh, yes, yeah, so it's really fun. So they're doing. Uh, if you order an InView, you're you're going to get it shipped to you from Arcworks, and uh, so that's really cool. That's and great. um I think you mentioned you're gonna be doing a ride with them, is that correct? Yeah, this uh this fall, hopefully. Um so Arcworks uh uh Arc of Monroe is uh is the kind of parent organization that uh it, uh, helps to manage uh disabled workers, uh bring people back into the workforce. So the whole purpose of what they do is to um, mainstream mainstream uh, disabled people okay. and they have uh, another component that's food service. So, so next to Arcworks is a food service place and, and they serve the, uh, the area where there's a bunch of businesses. So, so what they do is they take, again, high proportion of disabled people and train them how to work in the food service industry. So it's a place you can go and you can get lunch, you can get breakfast. So uh, they're very interested in showcasing what they do. So we're going to invite a bunch of riders in. It'll be a benefit. We're going to have a bunch of prizes we'll give away. And uh, it'll start out with a breakfast served by Arcworks a tour of the Arcworks facility. And then uh, I think we're going to take a ride to one of our many parks. And uh, if the social gathering stuff is, uh, is, is okay, um, they'll probably cater a barbecue um, and hopefully we'll have some entertainment and, uh, and people will get to pay a, um, a minimal fee for a ride that gives them a chance to earn a prize mm -hmm. and, and, and the money will be donated to support Arcworks. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. You've got a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds like a great time, boy. Really, I, yeah. I want to be there. Things going on. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of giving over there, Dave. Yeah. A lot of giving, right. a, lot of, a lot of great things going on in your world. Absolutely. So um, there's one thing, we're getting to where we got to wrap it up here, David. Sure. There's a question that, that I want to start asking our guest. And actually, sure. we asked it before. You, Deb, you want to ask it? Sure. Okay. So what advice would you give someone that's either thinking or wanting to become a rider in the motorcycle world? What advice would you give them? Get trained. <laughs> um, you know, so I grew up, I grew up um, uh, riding motocross. I knew how to ride a motorcycle. Um, when I decided to get my motorcycle license, I went and took an MSF course. And... Uh, I thought it, 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 it started with, with, you know, well, it's an easy way to get your license. Right. And, uh, and I thought, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to learn that much, but, and a lot of the people we were with, you know, they start out with, you know, learning how to put your bike on the kickstand, mm -hmm. learning right. how to get on it. Right. Basic right. stuff. So, you know, I, I've been doing all that. And, and I thought, I don't know if it's going to teach me that much, but it'll be fun. I'll be on a different bike, you know, and you know what? I learned something. I absolutely learned something. So whether whether your interest is learning how to ride on the road, whether your interest is adventure riding, uh, whether your interest is taking your road skills to the next level, uh, I I really believe it's it's worth training. And then join a group. Um, and and I, I join. You know, I'm a member of a couple of them, and uh, it's just it's it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, there's somebody in the group who's more experienced than you are who can help you grow. That's how you grow, whether right. it's in skills or just knowledge on how to maintain or work on your bike. Um, you get to see a bunch of different bikes. You'll fine tune what it is that you like. Um, so get trained, join a group and uh, and just have a blast. Fantastic. You know? Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Great, yeah. great, great advice, advice, by the way. That's right. And before we wrap up, is there anything that, that maybe we, we, we need to cover about the end view before we wrap things up, David, that you can think of? No, we're, um, we're and I appreciate all the time, we're, we're very different. Um, there are a couple of companies out there now who are selling an accelerometer only based brake light. 
the DOT actually did a study uh, a couple of years ago on m accessory motorcycle lighting. And they had an area of focus on brake lighting. So the DOT did a study on these accelerometer only based lights. So these are lights that don't integrate with your motorcycle. They go off because they sense deceleration. Mm. And the DOT study concluded by saying, be really cautious using these lights. When they interviewed motorists who were following motorcycles with these lights, the motorists reported, I didn't get it. And what the DOT found is that cars don't follow motorcycles that long in traffic. Motorcycles turn, motorcycles tend to weave in and out more. So the cars don't develop a relationship with what the car drivers called a randomly flashing light and a brake light. And the DOT concluded by saying, motorists tend to ignore what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. But an accelerometer-based light is, 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 is a great idea. So we worked with the DOT and we said, so how do you fix it? And they said, you have to have a physical brake light. So InView comes with a physical brake light. We have a unit that installs on the motorcycle and it integrates into your turn signals and braking system. So... So InView does what turning signaling hazards if your bike has them. That's great. But we also have an accelerometer in it. And the accelerometer senses motorcycle position. If you're slowing down by engine braking and you can slow down aggressively, um, it's important to let a car behind you know that you're slowing down even though you're not physically braking. Okay. With InView, not only will the, the helmet light go off, but a very bright waterproof accessory brake light will go off that you install by your tail light. Okay. And I guarantee you, the first thing a motorist is going to see is in view. It's in that upper third, upper third portion of your vision, high and center, where it should be. It's the most attention-getting place. Yes. The next thing a motorist is going to do, because they probably haven't seen one before, is look down. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see a brake light go off. And they're going to develop a relationship. Oh, that's a brake light right away. Wow, very good. So key, key distinction. Um, in view doesn't have a switch. Another key distinction between uh, some of the other units that are out there, you don't have to remember to turn it on or off. Mm -hmm. forget, forget to turn it on, it won't work, it won't protect you. Forget to turn it off, batteries will be dead the next time you go use it. Right. Um, so, so those are a couple of key things. And then the other place is, if somebody wants to buy one, use, go to your website, your website, or mm -hmm. go, to, uh, go to our website and make sure you use the promo code BIKERLIFE. Yes, because it'll get you it'll get you twenty five dollars off. Twenty five bucks, absolutely that's right. right. And that that's a big deal. So, um, so that's important to let people know, you know, to to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. that. Deb's going to go yeah. ahead and wrap it up, and we'll give okay. you the last word. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So we are so glad to know you first of all, and yes. then we're so oh, appreciative man. and grateful <clears throat> that you have joined us today to share with the world, all the good stuff that Third Eye Design and InView are doing. Um, but before we put our kickstands down and turn the ignitions off, we want to give you the last word of how everyone can reach out to one if they want to be an investor, dealer, distributor. We want you to open that back up and let everyone know how to reach out to you. And then we'll just wrap it up, if you would, just on how they can find the device. Sure, absolutely. Uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of me, uh, email is always great. David.Warner at thirdeyedesigninc.com. Um, go to the website, do a search for InView. You'll find our website. Um, so that's really, really important. And uh, I, I love talking to customers. Um, my, my phone number is out there. My email is out there. Uh, I love getting calls from people. Um, it, it was really interesting. Uh, somebody had sent a message into customer support and uh, I called him up. He, he was having trouble getting InView running. And uh, it's really pretty easy to get running. So uh, sure enough, he, he had just misread the instructions. He had crossed a wire and in uh, probably five minutes or less, I had had him running. And he says to me, um, yeah, well, I'm really, th thank you so much. I'm really anxious to get this. I'm going to go riding. Well, when somebody says that to me and, and I look outside and at the time, it's, uh, it's 45 degrees out. Uh, I, I always wonder where they are, right? right. I, so, so, so it's kind of a clue. So we have customers from all over the country. And I expected him to say Texas or Florida or California. He goes, well, I'm in a, I'm in a little town in upstate New York. And I thought, well, so are we. And uh, I said, well, that's interesting. Where? He goes, well, I'm in a little town outside of Rochester. 
I said, what town? He says, Brighton. Brighton is right next to Pittsford where I am. So he says, Brighton. And I just had a laugh. And I said, we're, we're in Pittsford. And he laughs and he goes, I want to come see you. So, so he eventually does. And uh, so I love talking to people. They're great connections. And, uh, and I would say, you know, life, life is an amazing journey and uh, um, kind of no regrets. And, uh, but you know, if, if you've been thinking about motorcycling or you've been thinking about riding, it is a wonderful way to experience travel, to experience the country and, uh, and, and don't wait. I, I, I can pretty much guarantee you for, for the people who go out there and do it, they're going to say, I wish I had done this earlier. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> it, it, you know, it really is, uh, it really is a great way to meet people and travel. Yeah. And, uh, it's been a great experience for me. Thanks, All right. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful, wonderful, David. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, we you really bet. appreciate you. Yeah, we look had a forward great to great time. Learned so many new things, oh, but yeah. also great you know, stories. You're a story great great storyteller. Like I said, you're a natural <laughs> sitting up there. I'm telling you, yeah. you're wonderful. Well, we appreciate well, thank you, you very so much. much. We look forward to, we'll do it again sometime. How's that sound? Awesome. So we'll get thank caught you so up much. about what's been going on. Maybe we'll, we'll do it face to face. Or whatever. So sounds great. That'd be wonderful. Really appreciate you, David. Tell everyone we said hello up there. I will. And until okay. then, ride safe, and we'll see you soon. All right. Take okay. Care. Take care. Be safe. Bye bye. Be seen. Thank you. Okay. Deb, I don't know about you, but that was a fantastic interview with David. It was a I, great. Time. I just it was loved a great it, time. man. Yeah. This guy's got some stories, and I, when I when I talked about on there that this is meant to be, I believe it. I still, I'm still getting chills. <laughs> I mean, for for everything to fall into place the way it was, and and people to to appear in his life, it's got to be something that's meant to be because it's saving lives. I totally be safe, agree. be seen, right? That's right. And I, you know, truly believe that when you're in the place that you're meant to be that that's what happens is the doors open. And as you mentioned, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. And that happens in life. And it's happened to us oh, yes. as we started this journey that's ourselves. That's how we met David. And so that's the coolest absolutely, thing. You know, we keep meeting neat people all over the country, quite honestly, um, because there's this magnetism, there's this attraction. There is this need to be together and be part of a bigger community. And it's all about the biker community. So, so I love that. We're so grateful to David. I'm telling you, you guys think I'm playing around here. Deb, can you show them and tell them? Uh, I'm still got chills going yeah. on here. <laughs> They're good chills, right? Right. And All I can't right. wait to get on an adventure bike and hit oh, those yeah. back roads and get into that trail. Oh, my gosh. We're going to take you with us, though, when we yeah, do it. All right. True. You're going to go with us. So, yeah. so stay tuned. We wanted you to know that, for one, we really appreciate you being part of this show. It really means a lot to Deb and I. And we're so truly grateful when we say that. We really mean it. We're truly grateful and thankful that you're with us. And we're really looking forward to some really great things taking place in the future. Next month is going to be quite interesting. It's we haven't revealed it yet, but yes. it's going to be exciting. So stay tuned so that you can follow what's going on and, and be with us. We want you to be with to us, be actually. part of the journey, yes, that's for do. sure. So. so, Deb, go ahead and let them know how to find us. And uh, if, they if this is the first time they're listening, where they can find us, uh, you can go out to the chuckanddebshow.com. That's one way. Right, absolutely. Follow us on Facebook on Biker Life Radio or the Chuck and Deb Show page. And um, be sure to join our group. So we've got lots of bikers around the country that are joining and becoming part of this bigger community and network. So we want to make sure that you Welcome. are part of our journey and experiencing that too. So we want to also just enjoy and have you on board with us in our um, biker lifestyle. Yeah. And also on YouTube, it's Chuck in Deb. You'll be able to find us that way if you look us up on YouTube. And if you're interested in the interview, which you really need to be after this interview, it's definitely something that's meant to be. It's something that can save your life. Yeah, be seen, be safe. Go out to Chuck in Deb show forward slash in view. All right. Again, we appreciate you all very much. I can't wait to come to you next week. Take care, everybody.